Prime Minister Narendra Modi, we are told, spoke with Noel Tata, expressing condolences. Home Minister Amit Shah may also attend the last rites of uh, and for Ratan Tata on behalf of Government of India, and specifically because this is going to be a state funeral. Home Minister Amit Shah, and remember, this is a senior representative of the government, uh, to to be there most likely at the last rites of Ratan Tata. I want to go back to uh, my colleague Krishna Gopal on that. He's the executive editor of Business Today magazine. Krishna, tell me this. You know, there have been many industrialists who've come and gone and many have had a certain legacy. What do you think it's about Ratan Tata? And do tell me if I'm correct on this, that there is, of course, a business legacy to it, that he's, of course, uh, hung out with the who's who of, of the global fraternity. But it's also who he looked as a person, his interactions, his behavior beyond that is one of the reasons that people were in awe of him. Pooja, uh, pick out two words here. I think one, uh, he was very enigmatic uh, mm -hmm. and the other being dignified. I think he brought a certain level of grace to the position he occupied. Yes. Uh, and I think a certain sense of, without being euphemistic, I think tremendous refinement. The fact that when he spoke, people listened. The fact that when he uh, put out a product, people are waiting to see it. Every time Ratan Tata came into the room, there was something he brought with it. Uh, he brought a certain sense of stature to India Incorporated. He gave us all a sense of pride in terms of products coming out of India. He gave us a sense of pride when uh, Tata has went and made all those big ticket overseas acquisitions. The sense of Indianness combined with the, what I would call a new sense of dignity, grace and refinement uh, would remain one of his biggest contributions. And these are not small words. Right? Choosing my words very carefully when I said uh, this was a new era for India and Cooperative when he took charge in the early 90s. It was a very difficult period for the group. He got a lot of businesses together, had to exit a lot of businesses, but did not compromise on what would be the business ethics for Tata's without compromising on a growth strategy. And I, I notice, uh, I'm, I'm noticing some of the comments that are coming in. They're not politicians, they're not businessmen. These are common Indians and you're seeing... I feel sad on this loss because I believe that, you know, he, he gave India a certain trust value. And I think that speaks a lot to have a brand, an Indian brand say, Is pe pura bharosa hai. and not just one product or another, but several products. And I think that takes a lot of work to ensure consistency. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the reputations are built over years, over decades, but in this case, you're speaking of reputations built over centuries. Correct. You walk into any of the Taj properties, for example, there's a certain... Indianness yes. or a Tata ness that comes with it. I mean, I'm just picking industries at random, but the extent to which all this touches our lives is something we currently forget. Mm. But it's a reality. I'm just getting back to the example of a Starbucks or just using, uh, let's say, uh, you know, steel manufacturer at Tata's or let's say a passenger car. Look mm. at the way he reoriented the group. I mean, Tata Motors, for example, was in a passenger vehicle business. They got it right. He quickly moved them to the electric vehicle business. And today, the EV business is a big part of what they're doing. Look at Tata Power. From power generation, he's moved them to the renewable energy part of it. The whole ability to reorient an existing business and still look at a new business at the same time. Uh, I mean, th this, is not, this is not an easy achievement. You know, I was also looking at some of the uh, past instances. And as Krishna, you know, I was looking at the 2008 attack in Mumbai at the Taj Hotel. And, and then to bring it back to life, to, to give it the glory that it had. All of this, you know, there is a certain resilience that comes in, that no matter what happens, and you keep re-energizing, renovating, bringing it to life. And I think that's what, in many ways, Tata Sun's group has been. As we go through his journey, and we are putting out some of the excerpts of, of when did he join, when did he take, take over, what did he do onward. There's launching Tata Nano. Then you're talking, remember, you mentioned Tata Indica. So there, was already, there were always a certain innovation. It may or may not have worked. But I think at the core... My understanding is his belief was how can an Indian benefit? Tata Nano may not have been the, the best enterprise, so to say. But he catered to the Indian who deserves to have a vehicle and shouldn't be spending a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. I mean, people can argue with the fact that uh, the Tata Nano did not work. And yes. it's probably fair to say that it quite didn't. But the point is the learnings he picked up from the Tata Nano and how we put that to better use in the personal vehicle business and eventually made a success of it is something we completely forget. So every time there's a perceived failure, the ability to bounce back and come out with a better product within that particular industry is not an easy thing to do. He did that all the time. You spoke of reorientation of the Tatas. I'm going to pick up a very small example. Uh, old timers will recollect that the Tata logo looked very different in the 90s. Mm. He brought a refreshing change in logo, got in wolf followings, I remember, uh, sometime in the mid to late 1990s, changed the logo, 
because it's absolutely clear this is a refreshingly new different data group. Who would put in the effort even relook at the logo? But he realized that that was the first point of contact for a person looking to understand what the data group was all about. Mm -hmm. So the ability to think uh, from a, from an Indian's perspective, what the data group stood for, or putting himself in the shoes of an average Indian, mm -hmm. uh, these are not. I mean, these are not common occurrences, if I may say so. Um, I, I want you to please stay on, Krishna, because I want to read out a statement of Anand Mahindra, who's the chairperson of the Mahindra Group, and he says, I'm unable to accept the absence. India's economy stands on the cusp of a historic leap forward, even today, like it was in the 1990s. And Ratan's life have had much to do with our being in this position. His mentorship and guidance at this point would have been invaluable. Isn't that also very interesting? 1990s, when India was becoming this modern economy, opening its doors, that's when Ratan Tata took over, and now in 2024, again, we are looking at a different kind of how Bharat and India can go together to the world. And that's when Anand Mahindra says we would have loved to have his mentorship. Do you also believe, uh, Krishna, that these are not just words, that there have been many industrialists who watched his journey and have been inspired by it? Without a doubt, you look at, I mean, look at it this way. He came in in 1992 when the group had to take a few difficult decisions. It had opened up its uh, those post-liberalization. He had to exit those businesses, get India ready for a new set of businesses, crack those businesses. He did all of that and a lot more. So for a lot of people uh, who kind of, let's say, relatively older businesses or even startups, they had a ready-made case study. So they could pick out what Atan Tata did, perhaps emulate it, perhaps even copy it in a nice way, but still had a uh, template to work on. I mean, it's not very often that all of us sit back and pick out one example from the past and try and understand how it works in the present. But we've had the good fortune of doing that. You look at what is called a relatively old-fashioned industrial data stream. What do you do with that? Went out, made global acquisitions like Nat Steel, Millennium Steel, did all of that before going to Chorus. So he prepared the company for the future that lay ahead. And when he turned aggressive, he was very aggressive. Even the case of JLA, for example, the people didn't give him a chance. He showed in the Indian automobile industry that it was quite cool, and I'm picking the word deliberately, to go out and pick up a global brand and still have a sense of pride. Today, when you say Tata JLA, it evokes a global feeling. It's not an Indian feeling anymore. And I think that's quite terrific if one takes of it. Very fascinating because, you know, you look at the journey of the man and how, like you also pointed out, and you're talking about how he conducted himself in public to people who possibly there was no quid pro quo and specifically when it comes to philanthropy of who he helped, perhaps is reflective of a certain legacy that is beyond the business enterprise that he was clearly leading.